Hey, what's up you guys? And today I'm gonna to be doing my project for Mr. Kuhn. So for my project, I chose to do a PowerPoint presentation. It kind of looks bland. I know I couldn't figure out what was happening with PowerPoint, so it wasn't letting me do some certain stuff. So this was the only thing I could get for now. But anyways, I'm gonna be explaining about unit four, chapter one, which is about water. So let me go to the next slide and I'll explain some more. So in the next slide, it's gonna be about water properties in 4.1.1. So some of the main things in this chapter is adhesion, surface tension, and cohesion. So let me explain about cohesion. So cohesion is the molecule attraction between particles of the same kind. So what's happening here is negative and positive charges are attracted to each other, and that's creating cohesion. So the negative and positive ones are attracting to each other, and that's basically what's happening here. And surface tension is the force that pulls mo molecules sorry, on the surface of a liquid together to form a thin layer. So like I said up here, the positive and negative charges, they're attracting to each other, but let's say we get a bunch of those together, that's gonna create that super thin layer. So adhesion is the force of attraction between different molecules. So let's say different molecules, for instance, have like different particles, and those particles are attracting to each other. So that's what's happening here to create adhesion. So let me go to the next slide and explain some more. So the next slide is about the water cycle 4.1.2. So the most important things in this chapter is transpiration, condensation, and evaporation. So let me explain a little bit about transpiration. So transpiration is the loss of water by plants. 10% of all water comes through this process. So let's say for instance, you water this plant. So if I get this plant right here, for instance, you see, so I have this plant here, right? And if I decide to put water in this plant, and put it out in the sun, but right now it's raining and I'll get to that later. So if I put water on this plant, the heat from the sun, let's say there's this light right here, right? And the light's coming down and beaming on it. So the water from inside the plant is gonna evaporate and that's what's gonna cause transpiration. So if I put this plant down for a second and explain the next one. So condensation is the change of a substance from a gas to a liquid. So if you look up at the sky right now, for me it's raining, I don't know for you guys, so for this one, basically what's happening is um, the gas in the sky, right? Like the clouds and stuff. It's gonna rain down on us and that's what's creating condensation. So basically it's like rain. So as we call it rain, so clouds create rain. That's basically what's happening. So evaporation is a change of a substance from a liquid to a gas. So basically let's say you get a pot of water and you put it on the stove. When you turn the stove on, what's gonna happen? It's gonna boil at some point so that's what's gonna create a gas, like the steam and stuff like that. So that's what evaporation is. So if I go to the next one, it's gonna be about glaciers in 4.1.3. And the most important things in this chapter is continental glacier, valley glacier, and why glaciers are so important to us. So for the first one, it's gonna be about continental glacier. A continental glacier is a glacier that covers a large area of land in a continuous sheet. So basically what this is, it's a large sheet of ice in the ocean and is traveling along the ocean. So that's what a continental glacier is. And for a valley glacier, a valley glacier is a long, narrow, U-shaped mass of ice that takes shape as ice moves down a mountain and through a valley area. So basically you have all this ice, let's say maybe in Antarctica. So in Antarctica, there's gonna be like a lot of ice. And as that ice travels from the mountain down to the sea, it's gonna create a certain shape, creating almost like a continental glacier almost but kind of different, so that's what's happening there. So glaciers are an important uh, component in Earth's water cycle because much more water is storage on the planet than is moving through the water cycle at any amount of time. So if you think about it, if you have a humongous like ice age thing going on, like a glacier, so if you like uh, think about the Titanic, like that humongous thing that hits the ship, that has a lot of water in it. And if you melt, like melt every single one of those, that's gonna create a lot of water. So that's kind of what it's saying here because it's making up more uh, water than the water cycle at any moment. So if I go to the next slide, I'm gonna be talking about groundwater in 4.1.4. And the most important things in this chapter is the water table, the zone of aeration, and the zone of saturation. So for the first one, it's about the water table. So the water table is the boundary between unsaturated and saturated uh, water. Like, uh, in the ground, that's where it happens. So basically you have the water that's kind of clean and the water that's kind of dirty. So that's what's kind of happening there. 
And in the zone of aeration is the underground region where pore spaces contain air and water. So if you kind of look at a diagram and stuff, I don't have a diagram up here, I wish I did, but the diagram would show like um, places in the ground where like there's air and where it also stores water. So that's what's happening here in this one. And the zone of saturation is the underground region where pore spaces are saturated with groundwater. So like I said up here, the different places are gonna store different things. So for this one, it's just gonna be specifically storing water. Okay, and if I go to the next slide, it's gonna be about surface water in 4.1.5. And the most important things in this chapter are a divide, a tributary, and a watershed. The divide is a ridge or other elevated region that separates watersheds. So basically what's happening here, it's like a big ridge or kind of like a, like a barrier and it's separating like where the water's going and stuff like that. So a tributary is a stream or river that flows into a large, uh, another large stream or river. So let me kind of explain what that means. So if I have a large stream here going straight and then there's another one coming from this one, this one is gonna be the tributary, just like kind of like a secondary stream that's forming into the bigger one. And a watershed is an area of land that drains into a particular river system. So let's say, um, for instance, uh, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I have a deck right here, and the deck has a bunch of water coming from it because there's a bunch of rain going on. And then on top of that, on the lower bottom of that is the ground. So that water is seeping into the ground. So that's kind of what's happening here. And let me explain the next one. So this one's gonna be about rivers in 4.1.6. And the most important things in this chapter is a mature river, an old river, and a rejuvenated river, and a youthful river. So these are four things. So I'm gonna be explaining a mature river first. So a mature river is a meandering, a meandering river located at a low elevation. So um, kind of like if we have, it's not, it's not a river that's like up here in the mountains, for instance, but it's a river that's gonna be located lower, on the lower section. And the uh, old river is a slow moving flat river. So it's kind of like, um, not, if you think about like an aqueduct, an aqueduct, the aqueduct is moving fast, but take the shape and like the size and like the, the flatness of it. Imagine that aqueduct is moving like super duper slow. That's basically what this is. And a rejuvenated river is a river with increased stream gradient and power to erode. So basically what's happening here is the stream has like a ton of power and stuff like that. And so that's what's happening here. It's like super kind of fast and stuff. So for a youthful river, a youthful river is a fast flowing irregular uh, river with a steep V-shaped uh, channel. So this one is like the super, super duper fast one. Like that's moving super fast and stuff like that. And it has like different shapes and stuff. Like for instance, it has like a V shape and it's super steep too. So that's what's going on here. And if I move over to the next slide, it's gonna be about ponds and lakes in 4.1.7. So the most important things in this chapter is lake formation, lake temperatures, and pond formation. So let me explain about lakes first. So lakes form when the glaciers melt and water filled with those depressions forming lakes. So let's say you take like an area of dirt. So if that dirt has like, let's say a carved out like kind of bowl inside of it. And I don't know, it probably happened a long time ago. So let's say over in a certain like super cold area, but then that water travels from the glaciers, it travels to that dirt region and that's where all the water is coming in. So that's kind of what's happening there. And the temperatures of lakes are affected by the depth or sunlight infiltration. So for this one here, it's like, um, let's say the carved out thing is super like shallow. For instance, like I could just walk in it and it's not even up to my waist. So that's what it's talking about. And let's say the light from this is coming down and it's heating up the temperature. So that's what's happening here. And I'm gonna be talking about pond formation. So pond formation is formed almost the same way that lakes are formed. So like lakes are formed from glaciers and maybe that's the same reason why ponds are formed. It's basically just the same thing. So if I move on to the next slide, okay, it's gonna be about dams and reservoirs in 4.1.8. So the most important things in this chapter is hydro, uh, sorry, I can't say it correctly, 
hydroelectric power, a levy and a reservoir. So hydroelectric power is the electricity produced from the power of moving water. Okay, so let's say, um, uh, I don't know how to explain this too good. So we take um, like the super fast river that I was explaining. So that super fast river that's like moving super fast, they're gonna put a machine there. And as the water goes through that machine, it's gonna turn, turn, turn. And that turning is gonna create like electricity. And so that electricity is used for like the lights that are coming down in my room right now. So, and for the next one, a levee is a structure built to prevent a river from overflowing. So it's kind of it's kind of like a dam almost, like how it's like having storing the water almost. But if like um, a river is super fast flowing and stuff, you don't want that water to like flood somewhere and that water to like devastate an entire area. So I'm going to be explaining a reservoir. So a reservoir is a natural or artificial lake used to store and regulate water. So that's kind of what I just said earlier about a dam. So the dam is storing that artificial lake water. And we use that stuff for like um, certain purposes, like plumbing for houses and stuff like that, like the water used to hose and stuff like that. So that's what's happening here. And so let me go to the next slide, which is the last slide. I can't pronounce it correctly, but eutrophication. So the most important things in the chapter is algal boom, algal, algal boom, the dead zone, and this word. So. Algal boom is an explosive growth of algae caused by too many nutrients in the water. So let's say, have you ever looked at like, I don't know if you have or not, but like the bottom of a ship. If you look at the bottom of a ship, there's gonna be like a bunch of like algae and stuff like that. And, but imagine that like, but 10 times greater. That's what's happening here. And for the next one, it's gonna be about the dead zone. And the dead zone is an area that has depleted of oxygen by uh, eutrophication. So let me explain what eutrophication is. I didn't want to put it like right here because I want to explain it from the book because it will make more sense. So if I go over to the last part of it, which is going to be right here. So eutrophication is the process by which nitrate or phosphate compounds overrich a bottle of water and deplete its oxygen. So basically like a bunch of chemicals and stuff is like coming into here and stuff. So I'm going to kind of show you like the picture from inside the book, that's what it looks like. And that's what's happening there. It's like, it's just depleting it of all this type of stuff. And it's causing things maybe to grow, like to, sorry, not to grow, the opposite of that, to die. So that's what's happening here. So that's all the chapters for um, chapter four. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you guys, you guys already know. So basically I went through everything there is to explain about all this stuff. And that's kind of it. That's kind of my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, maybe I'll, I don't know if I will, maybe, maybe or not make more stuff like this if I'm bored. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed.